I need to replace this brake hose. I'm going to replace them with some stainless steel ones. These came from Andy at Apple Yard. That's a 9 16th, 9 16th and 9 16th. It's a little different on this end. On my car, that's a half inch, that's a 9 16th. And there's a 9 16th in there. I got these both undone first, gently going backwards and forwards so that I didn't twist the copper pipe in this case until they were loose. And then I'll replace it with this stainless steel one, which funnily enough, didn't come with any nuts, but I've got some uh, Imperial nuts. This one here, the one that's part of the stainless steel uh, brake hose is actually 14 mil. The flare is also just a single flare. It's not a, a double flare. There's no washer on this side. There's a washer and nut on this side. Those have all lined up nicely and now it's a question of doing that up. There's obviously a lot of brake fluid that's dripping out. I've put a cover over the top of the master cylinder, but um, and I've only got one master cylinder and sealed that, but it's still dripping. What's also interesting is they've done a different flare on this pipe, I think. They call that a double flare. Whoever made these aftermarket ones, I'm not sure which should be the correct flare to go on there. Having connected it all up, if I turn the steering wheel right, mm. the pipe fouls the rubber bump stop. You can see there's a definite contact here and it's forcing that pipe mm. out of position. I appreciate that the suspension is on its full extension, but that shouldn't happen. Yeah, turn it around. Looking at the brake hose on the other side, the original hose, you can see where the hose is started to go on the left hand side. So that contact might account for why this hose has been damaged. The hose is held on by a bracket which goes up there under the nut and then it's bent back up there to hold it in place to stop it moving. Looking at my bracket, it has a twist on it so that this is angled more in that direction. If that bracket was angled more in that direction, it wouldn't have the same impact that would be more like that and you can see the twist that's already on this bracket so maybe if i return that twist to have it so that it's flat maybe that will remedy this issue of it impinging on there Making a comparison with the left hand side, this is the right hand side, this bracket is, is flat, where the other bracket had a twist on it. I've just bent it a small amount and now at full lock it's no longer up against that mount. So I think the problem was simply that 
this bracket had a significant twist on it. Now the angle is much improved at full, full lock, and we're missing that. Taking that twist out carefully because of the, the brake point, and that seems to have resolved it. And now that's the, the brake pipe at full left lock. So I'm happy now. On my car, on this right hand side, all of these nuts are 916. On the left hand side, this particular one was a half inch. Not really trying to teach anybody anything, but when you've got to undo lock nuts or two nuts together, if you position the spanners correctly, you can apply pressure to both spanners at the same time uh, to unlock them. It's, um, it's copper. Um, and again, it's just got one flare. I think probably to get the alignment right, it's better to do it before you do up this nut. I had some problems with the other one and had to undo the nut. One went on perfectly well. But to get these to line up so that you can just screw that on by hand, I think it's just probably better not to do up the lock nuts first. This one was well and truly stuck. So temporarily I had to attach the new brake hose to the outlet to stop it all running out because it was taking so long. You will hear discussions about putting a twist on this um, brake hose to stop it coming into contact with all this stuff. If you, if you do it up just a little bit, so it, it's just pinched tight, then you can adjust this one here. So you can make the hose move away from all that stuff. You don't want to do too much. So I'm going to put it at about there. It's natural inclination, I suppose, would be somewhere around there. But if I twist it there, then it doesn't come into contact with anything. So this is full lock where I was having problems before on the other side where it was coming into contact with the bump stop. But this bracket is properly set up, it's, it's straight. And now on full lock in the opposite direction, that just seems fine. In doing all this work, regardless of the seal on top, um, it's drained completely away. What I didn't know was actually in here, a gauze filter. Cleaned out the brake. Clean, <laughs> cleaned out the, cleaned out the, cleaned out the brake fluid reservoir and filter. So I'll just reinstate that. Pressing gently down, it sort of clips in place the filter. Now I'll fill it and flush through the system. That's the best I can do, I think. And of course, there's always one that won't come off because the head's already been chewed off. I have to put on some more grips, I think. One trick I was shown by my father when you can't get something undone, and I'm having trouble actually getting this bleed screw to move, is to tap the thing whilst just applying a bit of pressure to shock it into releasing. It won't come just with banging, so I'm going to just have to apply a bit of heat. And then I'm going to just spray that. The nipple.
Oh, there we go. Well, that worked perfectly <laughs> for the video anyway. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for better. 